Hi, I'm Clarity from Rush of Clarity, and I'm here with up-and-coming Denver band, Amzie. Hi. Hi. This is Brennan and Sean. And you're Clarity. I am. <laughs> okay, so, you two met in 2005, and you began experimenting with music from there with The Shed and Liquid House. How do you feel you two have grown and evolved within music from 2005 to now with Amzie? Uh, since 2005, it's been a crazy journey, and I feel that uh, a lot of our style has evolved through those moments in our lives, the things that we've gone through and experienced, and uh, when we started out, it was just trying to find this like medium, this bridge between our two styles, and I think finally, when it came down to it, we finally got it and found something that we like, and so we're just going from there. So what did you two do within Liquid House? So well, Liquid House is, um, is, a, is a teen mentor type thing. It creates a creative community for teens, let's put it that way. Um, and we actually competed when we were teenagers in a battle of the bands um, and did music. And we actually did a film festival with them too. Um, and that kind of brought us closer as musicians because it gave us something to strive for as teenagers. We are actually still a part of the Liquid House today. We're the mentor band, or mentors um, for younger teen musicians. So it's a little bit of what we do. That's awesome. So how did you two become involved with the style and genre of music you write and perform now? Jeez. Uh, when, it, when it began, we were just really trying to I felt like we had to pick a genre and try to stick to it, which uh, we tried to do for years, it seems, and it didn't, it wasn't fluid, it, we weren't creating anything we were really happy with, so eventually we just decided that um, since we have like a sort of ADHD nature about like our own personalities, that we were just going to throw in whatever influence we wanted to throw in and just see how the song uh, presented itself. And, that's why I think that we finally came to AMSI when we realized that we managed to create like a, a bridge between our, our styles. Yeah, just let the music happen, basically. Right. And so AMSI is your mom's name? AMSI is my mom's name. Okay. So uh, that came from, uh, we used to play music in a shed in my backyard and get really loud and annoy my mom. And she put up with our with our stuff for a long time, and we said if we, we ever started a, a band, um, basically we would name it after her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, I shout out to Sean's mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, <laughs> Thanks, if Sean's mom. mom is watching, thank you. Hi, mom. Hi, Amzie. Hi. Shout out to Amzie from Amzie. Okay, so you two recently won. Um, Channel 93.3's Demo Derby Final um, in June. What was your experience like with that contest and winning? It was great. Um, we've been listening to 93.3 for a long time since we were in high school and they've helped break a lot of bands so it was really exciting to be a part of one of their events and, and to win it even was amazing. Just being a part of it was pretty amazing but to actually win um, was pretty awesome. It's great because we got to, I mean, the experience itself is amazing, but meeting all of those local artists that have come out to like showcase a demo was fantastic. It, it, like, it brought a sense of community that usually you, I mean, if you're making music at home or something like that, usually you don't feel that type of connection. But when we were there, we really got to feel the community and we got to like, have a lot of fun at the same time. And it, happy that we want it. You met a lot of great bands like Rumors Follow. I can give them a shout out. And Do you think that winning um, that contest has attributed to your recent successes as a band? I think it, it kind of gave us the confidence that we needed to, to continue moving forward with our music. Um, for a long time we were working together and we're kind of afraid to put stuff out to see, you know, when you create something, it's it's kind of hard to 
show it to people because you're worried they're going to hate it. And, right. Um, getting all that positive feedback was pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely helped us break up uh, through the barrier within ourselves. No, uh, we just, we were really happy that people liked our music and it still felt like kind of a shock to us to hear that people really did like it and they were feeling the energy and they were dancing and we thought, wow, this is amazing. Like, we can definitely, we got to keep going and it just gave us a better drive and better motivation to like, keep pushing. Okay, so with your live shows, what do you think that the audiences can expect? Lots of blood, no. Blood and gore? Yeah, no. It's kind of a thing, no. <laughs> Chainsaws? Here and there. Juggling chainsaws. He's got some good ideas. I, I have old ideas here. Down, <laughs> so. I think ultimately it's a, we really want to bring a type of energy live shows are super important to us. We want to get the crowd involved. We, we want to have like dancing with us. I mean, if I could, every time I would jump off the stage and just like dance with the crowd. It's smash so much guitars. fun. Yeah. You want to smash guitars. He just wants to smash guitars. I think just entertaining is, is a big part of what we like to do. And I know we've been to a lot of shows together where bands are good, but they don't entertain. Mm -hmm. And I feel as a musician, if you have good music, um, you should have a good show to go along with that. So, Because right. people can listen to your music all day on an album and get that. But if, when they go to your show, they go to see something extra. Mm -hmm. And that is the show. That is the entertainment part of it. So um, I think they can expect energy, a show. Um, and it's probably only going to go up from here because we definitely, I mean, the moment we can put fireworks in a show, yeah. we're going to do it. You have two other members who play with you at your live shows. Um, how do you think them playing with you there versus, you know, another dimension, how does that change or add to the chemical makeup of your guys' group? I think, this is my opinion, it breathes life into what we're doing live. Because it would be kind of lame if it was just me and Brennan a drummer and a bass player, uh, it really brings a real human thing to it and, and it gives it life and credibility. And they're really fun people that we work with too and we're like good friends and we all feed up the same energy with each other so in the end it just like it gives more to the to the show just like what Sean was saying. So you're set to release an EP featuring your singles um, Five Minutes to Midnight and Time to Change. What were some common themes you found yourself writing about um, with this new EP? Uh, those songs were really... Um, the concept sort of developed at big turning points in our lives. Um, it's like, I, I think of... When we wrote Five Minutes to Midnight, it was sort of this... This ode to the mentality you have as a, a teen, especially when you have those bright aspirations. You look into the future and everything looks it's just around the corner and success is right there and you can just have fun in the moment and it'll come to you but uh, unfortunately like it's like with my life too and like everybody's life it doesn't always work out like that and sometimes you can like dig yourself into a hole you can get like down uh, down spirited I guess and that's where time to change actually came in because that was the that's when you realize that you're in this rut and you want those dreams to be fulfilled and it's and it's time that you stop making that happen, you stop going for it and I think that was those two sort of complement each other in the right. story arc kind of right way. What are your current future plans? Obviously you have working on the EP then, do you have any shows and works or um, well our current current plans right now are that Record an EP, which we're actually going to do next week. We're going up to a cabin. He's a really great dude. He's going to help uh, produce and make our music. Um, and then we're going to have an EP release party, hopefully in September. We have we have a couple of shows that we're definitely looking to get um, to get booked. All I would have to say is uh, 
follow us on Twitter, go to amzmusic.com or Facebook, and, and that's how you can keep in touch to make sure that you don't miss out. Connect on social media, yeah. that's the moral of this interview. <laughs> We're continuing in the eye of the storm currently. <laughs> but It's like Twister. I know. Okay, so for my final question, it's very serious. It's the most serious question I think I've asked in an interview so far. Okay. If you had to be to choose between being a tomato or a head of broccoli for the rest of your life, which would you be? This is your ultimatum. I feel like I have a good head on my shoulders. Oh, so I guess that would be broccoli. You gonna put that broccoli. on the table? Broccoli. Okay. I'm um, broccoli. I'm gonna have to go ahead and say I'm a tomato. And I still don't even know, is it a berry or is it a vegetable? Before we get blown over by the storm, I'm going to sign off. It's been great chatting with you guys. Thank Likewise, you. thank you so much, Clarity. Thank you for Clarity. putting up with this wind. Getting the wind blown up. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm Clarity, signing off.